Welcome back everybody. It's been about a week and I had these cages open for most of that week. I actually set up a little fan to circulate air over them for about three days to speed up the drying process. So the humidity has been getting down below 50 in the heat of the day and kind of going up into the 60% range at night, which is fine. And you can see our substrate looks a lot lighter now. And it's a nice little crust on it. Which is what you want. So what we're going to do today is add the custodians and put in a few final climbing features. And then I'll close these up and they'll be ready to grow in for a bit before the gecko gets to go in and trash everything. This is the floor heat coming through at about 90. And actually these light fixtures give off heat. Fluorescents are less heat than incandescents, but not zero heat. And especially where the fixture is inside, this actually radiates heat all day. It can get quite hot in this back corner with as far as the air temperature. As you move forward, the temp starts dropping down. And right now my ambient room temperature is about 82 or 83. So it's not really going to get much cooler inside my enclosures. And this bulb in back here is a UVB100 bulb. And it's actually very intense right underneath the bulb here. You know, you're never going to see a leopard gecko back here. As long as they have a heat source that isn't this bulb, they're not going to go suck up this much UV. But you can see as you move away, it gets into this nice kind of partial shade range of UV index which is great. You know, I'll see my geckos sometimes sitting, you know, in the partial shade here, or they'll stick out their tail over in this hide. What I have here are some custodians that I've actually collected from my other tanks. On this side, this is from my desert beetle enclosure, and there's a lot of pill bugs in here, which these are great for desert enclosures. What you probably can't see is there's actually a lot of book lice in here. And they're very tiny. They're just a little smaller than springtails. But I grabbed some of the substrate and leaves because there is a colony of them in there and I'm hoping to seed some into these new enclosures. And over here, this is substrate from one of my jungle vivariums and it's pretty much teeming with springtails. Those aren't as great for deserts, but I have had them persist a little in the wettest areas. Alright, here we go. Get some good pill bugs in here. Try to get at least a dozen or so adults in each one. And I'm going to grab some of the jungle substrate with springtails in it and get that in here too. And hopefully these will do okay. I'm trying not to add too much more water. I do need to keep this little plant watered though. So I'm kind of carefully watering it and then covering it back up with the cork bark because I want these enclosures to keep kind of cycling and drying out a little more. You don't have to get too, too dry for leopard geckos. But I want to get that nice, crusty desert formed. I'm going to give this plant a little bit of water here. You know, normally San Severi are pretty hardy and like to dry out a little, but because this one is freshly planted, it needs to develop new roots. I'm going to keep it a little wetter than normal, at least for a few weeks here. That's okay, this enclosure is going to have plenty of time to dry out. I'll give you a quick look at the other two before I start doing the final touches here. Just a little temperature and light logger in back there.
One thing you probably noticed is that I did not put any sort of background into these little enclosures. I didn't want to install anything even semi-permanent in there. So another option is these great kind of magnetic ledges. Um, they have very powerful magnets and the idea is you can just hook them and move them wherever you like. So these make awesome rock formations for geckos. You know, you could also use something that you drilled or screwed or silicone to the back wall if you didn't mind having something more permanent. Um, and there's also fully uh, constructed backgrounds out of foam, or you can make your own out of foam and grout. So there's plenty of options if you do want a background. I've gone and installed some of these. There's one flat ledge that I'm putting up front. Geckos love to have a high perch to kind of survey their territory. And this is pretty ideal. You know, it's not, it's a little far off the ground, but it's not so far that they aren't going to be able to climb up on it. I think a great lookout perch. Now, I don't want to take up too much of the open space. You know, these compartments are okay size, but they're not giant, so. One climbing wall is enough, and one very nice perch for them to hang out in. It's right up against the front window. They love being nosy. Ahem. <laughs> it's the middle of the day. Did I wake you up? Are you hoping for a mealworm? 100% mealworm. <laughs> oh, these guys are so friendly and nosy. This guy especially though. He is my nosiest gecko by far. I think you have had enough mealworm treats today. This is actually going to probably be his compartment. and He'll be very excited because he's one of the geckos who is old enough to have lived in the old bioactive and been very sad when all his dirt disappeared. And this is about it. I'm not going to do anything else to this compartment. There's obviously a lot more you could do. If you have larger enclosures, you could make more climbing features, have room for more plants without negatively impacting the humidity. Um, you'll notice I don't have any plant lighting in here, which limits my choice of species. Um, a lot of cacti and stuff require really bright light. So there's some Sansevieria species, some Haworthia species, uh, maybe a few others that are kind of uh, tolerant of partial shade, but if you had plant lights you could have a whole array of different kind of succulents and grasses. Because these are really contained I have to be careful how many fixtures I put in here because any fixture, even an LED fixture, is going to generate a little bit of heat. So I really want anything that generates heat on the back wall and then enough room that there can actually be a gradient in this enclosure. If you have any questions or have suggestions, feel free to comment, but this is it until I actually get the geckos moved in and then I'll post an update and show you how they like it. I hope you had fun watching along and I hope this shows you that, you know, these type of enclosures, they're a little bit of work, but they're not impossible and it's not rocket science. So if you're interested in having this kind of habitat, you know, it's totally possible to set it up in whatever space or type of enclosure you have. So thanks for watching.